Uh, uh, Father, we just thank you for this beautiful day you have given to us. Uh, this has been a tough week. We've lost loved ones. We've lost uh, public servants. We've lost others that uh, that have served our community so well. We, we, we extend our sympathies to their families. Father, be with us as we do uh, your business tonight and the business of the people of the city of Jamestown and our community. We thank you for your many blessings you've given to us. Give us wisdom and insight as decisions are made for our community and our city. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, with, with the hard work. 
I like the idea of doing them myself and keeping them here and being able to uh, take care of the people that want them done. And then the hundred dollars is cheaper than you know. Me and Tony were talking about uh, before we uh, convened. Uh, what if one's still good after four years? Can well, I think they're just doing that kind of because they're looking at that as that's four years of what they're going to put them up because you're going to have more people eventually. You're going to recognize more. You're going to run out of room if you just keep levels. Well, again, some people might, may not want to renew. Yeah, because yeah. okay. yeah, Fierce has been up there three or four years. I mean, it's the I don't see nothing wrong. Yeah. Now, if you do one of James, now, the person you put up, do they have to be from James? Now? No, they can be from anywhere. I think it's just the symbol on there. I know they've got one of those friends, my dad. Said. I'd like to do one down here. Janice, Janice Hale. <coughs> from Webb's Crossroads. You know. No, it would no, You know, Janice, Ricky, you remember Ricky Hale? Yeah. Okay, Ricky died, you know, and passed away. And Janice was wanting to do one of her, of him and, uh, uh, her father, Doc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, but she really wants to get them done, you know. And uh, yeah, she's taught me a couple yeah. times about it. I've got a couple more than one. Yeah, one now. I just told the rest of we got something figured out. I get back over them. Yeah. And I, I don't think there's anything that would say that we have to take them down in four years if we've got room and people's buying them and we've got room to put them up there. Then. Yeah. People won't leave them, let them leave them, but if, well, if you don't charge 100, there, I mean, that's $25 a year for them to be up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty good. It's a good time, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, instead of just saying after four years we got to take all these down, we only have a few banners. I think that's the reason most friends done it. I, I'm not sure, but I feel like they done it for the fact that some of, some of them do not look that way. I guess it depends on. I guess the way that the weather get them, I don't know, but I know a lot of bears, they're falling apart, they're, they're ripping, actually they're getting really brittle. Um, and I think that it was just a set, okay, they, on average they lasted about four years, so I think that's, yeah. that's just the number they use to, if they family wants so they can reorder again, and, and we'll put a brand new one up, or, you know, they can, they can opt out and not do it. Right. But I think that's the way their ordinance read, because that's, I haven't seen it, but I know they've done it more than it's all in veterans banners, so uh, I think that's just, that, that was just the ordinance they put in place at the time frame. Well, what about the ones that have just bought these kind in the last year or two that, you know, are, we, because they're obviously going to not be the same if we go with them and, and somebody just bought one of these last year, you're not going to, I mean, can we not, when we well, hang them up, try to hang Dad in one section and hang them in one section? Well, our work, I mean, our work can be done. Yeah, it can be, it can be, he talked like he could match that. He just, he just made one up just to be, and I think he wanted to put the JTKY on it. And I think that, to me, if, if you're going to do it, that might be the way to do it. Like, he, he, some of those, we run into a big issue with people wanting them certain places where it gets hard to do. I mean, they, they get mad because they're not in one place. They're next to somebody that they, they didn't like this person. <laughs> I don't know what they did. It's crazy what we run into hanging these banners on. But uh, you know, if we kept making those together and kind of just phase those out as as just say a four year deal, right. and, and and everybody goes with these. That's pretty neat. Yeah. They look good. Do a yeah, lot I like them. Do a lot of them. Oh, yeah, well, that's what we know. It just went, it was crazy. Yeah, it was amazing. Was there really somebody didn't want to be next to somebody? Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, it is amazing. I mean, phone calls that we have, we'll have over the banners. And, like, we'll put them on and then have to go move one. What happened to the bond of the military? <laughs> <laughs> Don't put mine up the next time. Golly. Maybe okay. it's a Democrat and a Republican. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all want to go ahead and make a decision on that? Uh, you want to? I'm going to go with it. I'm, yeah, I'll, I'll second that. Got a motion by Dwight, second by Tony. All in favor? Uh, Any opposed? So we're going to go with these banners. 
we're going to kind of stick with the four years, just kind of. That's another thing we need to look at maybe by next meeting. Try to do, do we want to do an ordinance that, that states that, uh, like that, that kind of mimics Brussels Springs? You know what I'm saying? I, I think we need to have something in line that way it keeps any problems from somebody yeah. saying well, we let somebody do this or do that. We've got to be in an ordinance, you got to stick by it. So we don't charge the same as what they cost us or? No, let's do it. Just $100. Are you? Yeah. Yeah, trying to look at doing something about three years old. Sure. Just kind of sketch it out for me. What do we need to do? Uh, the lottery you put it into a small bit. What it would probably go to would be a lottery job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They would just stick along and just say, I don't know, oh, that's what it's going to be. That's what we're going to do. Okay, so let's work on that. Maybe we'll come up with, try to write some things and then get an ordinance on that. Maybe we're going to go ahead and. So is this something we can we can get a hold of those people and maybe those two that you're talking about the ones yeah. I'm talking about go ahead and Start get some try to get an order in? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. All right. Okay, we're going to try to move things around a little bit just because we've got a couple things in between you and I don't want you to know. Are you probably going back tonight? I am, but don't so, rush on my house. No, it's <laughs> okay. Uh, there's no reason we can't skip that because it's pretty exciting, and I think we need to get excited here. So, uh, this is Miss Tara Good. Good. And um, her and Mr. Randy Markham are here with some news about a weather. Well, I'll let you yeah, talk about it, tell because they know I know a little bit about it, but just enough to be dangerous. So, I'll <laughs> let them tell you all about it. Sure. Um, so I've got a few slides here that explain um, the, the project that uh, Mayor Hinton referenced. Um, first of all, thanks for having me um, here. I live in Louisville, so not too far down the road. Um, and our company is based in Louisville, so this is very much Kentucky homegrown, and we're really excited to be bringing one of these systems to the state. This would be the first one for the state. Um, Josh Markham has been working with my team and I on helping find a, a site for what we call a municipal gap filling weather radar partnership. So I'll just walk through that a little bit and I'll try to go quickly because I know we have limited time. But please stop me and ask any questions. There are no silly questions when it comes to weather radar, so I'd love to answer them. Um, I do always start with my team. There are a few others on my team as well, but this is, this is my group that pretty much leads um, all of our radar operations across the country, but we all live also right here in Kentucky, so uh, they're with me every day. Um, today, Riley, um, who also lives in Louisville, was here um, checking out the site um, and, and potential options for the radar. Um, I have a background in local government, so I spent almost a decade um, cleaning up natural disasters, responding to natural disasters. Unfortunately, my first one was an EF4 tornado where we lost eight kids. Um, and one senior adult. So pretty much from that day on, <laughs> I became very invested in weather um, and then moved into that and I sort of merged both worlds now um, in, in my role at Climate Vision. Um, and then Emily, um, she oversees where we site all of our radars and all of the installations. And then Jonathan takes the baton once um, the radars are installed. So in essence, the partners that we work with don't really have to worry about anything other than just helping us get to the site and we might ask questions about who's the utility, etc. in that area, but we try to make this as painless as possible for the partners that we work with. Um, so the main mission of Climate Vision is really to fill gaps in traditional weather surveillance. Um, I'll explain kind of what those look like on this next slide. Uh, we are really lucky in the U.S. to have the gold standard of weather radar networks. Um, you, you may know them as referenced uh, as NextRats. Um, the, I can't remember where the closest one here is, but um, we have one in Louisville. Um, but even with that big, robust, um, long-range scan network, we do have a lot of gaps that happen at the lower level. So that's what the image on the right there um, demonstrates. It's pretty much when you're looking about 4,000 feet and, and lower in the atmosphere. Everything on the right is sparse. Um, this is why you might hear of things spinning up, tornadoes that people didn't really see coming. It's raining, but the radar says it's not, and vice versa. Um, standing at a sporting event, and you're getting poured on. Um, that is indicative of what we would call a weather gap. Um, so it's not a new problem. Um, Climate Vision is a startup, um, kind of spun out of a, a weather radar manufacturer based in Alabama. Um, 
Um, and the reason for that is that uh, government budgets are obviously shrinking uh, or uh, being reallocated, and weather is uh, never going away. We still contend with, especially in the state of Kentucky recently, um, some pretty extreme weather. Um, so the time is right uh, for, for climate vision to go and do what we're doing. <coughs> Additionally, one, of, one thing that I, that I think we sometimes uh, don't realize just in our day to day when we read the headlines about tornadoes, there's a lot of science that shows um, tornado alley kind of in the east, and Kentucky has seen that as well. So um, where it used to be centralized, you know, around Oklahoma and areas that we would call tornado alley, we're seeing a whole lot more activity uh, to the east of, of the country. So we, in our first phase of sighting all of our radars, we were very much focused on this corner of the country. Um, we'll be putting them all over. We have about 200 radars that we're putting out there um, across the country, but this is our focus for sure. Um, so a lot of folks say, well, how do you pay for this? <laughs> um, and uh, I'll get to kind of like how the partnership works in just a second, but we're able to bring the radar to the communities that we work with, the partners that we work with, because we do monetize other forms of data. So we monetize data that comes off the radar, um, and it also feeds some models that we monetize, and then we have additional types of weather models that um, all the industries that you see here benefit from. So that allows us to underwrite the cost where the former model of getting a weather radar in a gap would be either on the back of the local government, um, or the local government would be lobbying either their state or federal government for funds and, and typically would not win that argument. So um, that's how we're able to, to get a kind of unique public-private partnership solution um, and it's, um, it's worth looking, so we're really proud of it. Um, really quickly, a little more about weather gaps. I mentioned um, it's not a new problem. It is something that um, uh, several forecasters, governments, et cetera, have been trying to solve for many years. Um, even trying to use existing radars and maybe change the tilt of the dish, et cetera, just to try to get little incremental improvements. Um, but really the main barrier to solving this is cost. Um, a typical uh, government weather radar is very expensive. Um, it typically costs about $10 million for them to place the system and all of the associated infrastructure. Um, our radar, which I'll show you in a minute, is very compact. Um, and suited just for gap filling. It's not meant to replace um, the National Weather Service radars. It's meant to complement and supplement those really focusing on that lower level. Um, and really the image on the left here is what you guys are um, experiencing. Um, so some people say, well, how do you know where to go to place <laughs> the weather radars? Um, well, because we know where every National Weather Service system is, we know exactly the distance between those and where that low level may be exposed. Um, so that's what you see on the left. Um, the further away a particular city a community gets away from the National Weather Service system, the higher the beam is over the head. So that's where a lot of that volatility happens. Um, and I'll show you an example of that uh, in just a second. And this right here in the blue, this is where we sit today. So everything in red is your neighboring National Weather Service systems and their coverage at 4,000 feet below. And then that blue circle right there um, where we sit. Now we have a system live in what we call our Tennessee 34 gap right now um, in, uh, I think that was in Sparta. And then we'll at some point be placing one uh, just to the north of you guys and that will actually fill the entire state of Kentucky so there won't be any more gaps in coverage. Um, so a little bit about the radar and then I'll show you this uh, quick case study. Um, we are this little baby over here on the left. So. Um, and this is kind of where the partnership comes in. Um, to the far right, this is what you might be used to seeing on television uh, when they're talking about the National Weather Service system. It's a big kind of Cadillac, a big mama of radars, uh, is what Emily and I normally call them. And then we, over here on the far side, we're the baby. Um, it's got an 8 foot dish and a 12 foot radar. So while it is a big piece of infrastructure, comparatively speaking, it's, it's pretty compact. So that allows us to put it on buildings or water tanks or something that's already standing because um, it also doesn't weigh here as much. It doesn't need as much as a typical um, National Weather Service system would. Um, and it is a closed, or not a closed frequency, a high frequency, so it doesn't interfere with other things like uh, water meter readers, SCADA equipment, um, emergency antennas, things like that. So we often co-locate with that type of equipment um, and that's the kind of thing that only this radar could do. Uh, occasionally you will see a C-band radar, so TV stations will market it, like WLKY has a pretty old one that they sometimes talk about, um, and then uh, WKYT had one at one point. 
You're seeing less and less of that one because of cost and two because there's a lot of interference on, on the frequency that they run on. So some of the benefits we get from this particular radar, in addition to just the gap filling, um, is this difference that you see on the left and the right. So this is one of our systems that's live in Georgia. Um, on the left, this is what the National Weather Service picked up once it finally picked up that particular tornado that had actually spun out um, much lower to the ground. Um, you can tell on the left, there's certainly a situation, there's certainly really bad weather. They've got it warned, so they have enough signals to tell them to warn it, which is good. But on the right-hand side, you can look at that pretty clearly if you're an emergency management person or public safety and say, yeah, that looks a bit like a tornado hook. Um, of course, our radars are not meant to have anybody in the public service war, and that still rests squarely with the National Weather Service um, folks, but uh, we're doing work with them uh, to go through a data validation cycle whereby they can pull this in and also warn against it. Um, but the next slide is probably a really exciting thing that I like to tell. Um, that exact same tornado that I just showed you, um, like I said, spun up really close to the ground. It was about 900 feet above uh, the ground elevation at that point. And because our gap filling radar was there, it caught it much earlier than the nearest National Weather Service system spotted it. So this would have provided about an 18 minute advance warning. So that's pretty compelling when you think about the power of what one of these radars can do. Um, and that data validation cycle that I mentioned is what the National Weather Service is, is working on to try to figure out how to pull that in and warn again. Um, so tornadoes get the headlines. Um, typically, an emergency manager or public safety person, they're going to contend with rain on a more regular occasion. Um, so this particular video will also show you how it's a little bit more useful just kind of on the day-to-day. -day. Um, you can see clear differences in resolution here, but also you can see there was a, actually a bit overestimation of rain on the um, National Weather Service system. And ours on the right got a little bit more finite about where the rain was going to go and where the most severe rain was going to end up in that particular community. This was actually during Hurricane Ian when it moves across the country. Um, so that can be really helpful when you're thinking about strategy and where you're going to locate resources and things when you're responding to weather. Um, this is probably the more regular use case, um, but of course the tornado scenario is, is equal. A little bit about the, the insulation itself. So uh, this is what it looks like, basically. Um, we lift everything that you see on the left-hand screen here. Uh, we hook it to a crane. We lift it up. Um, we say it's taking flight at that point. Um, and then we put it on top of whatever structure that we've been able to partner on. Um, and then this little cabinet to the right sits down uh, on the ground on a concrete pad with a generator. It is self-enclosed. It's a computer. It's got an air conditioner air conditioner in it. Um, we operate it remotely, so there's nobody that needs to come on the site every day. Um, it's fairly hands-off. Uh, now, if we had a situation where we needed to come check something or we're doing annual maintenance, we would want to coordinate with our partner in that. Um, but it's pretty compact in terms of the installation. And all of that is stuff that we take care of. Uh, it's got lightning protection and um, uh, aircraft running lights, so some, some of the communities are really good. want that assurance. <coughs> Um, so for us, um, the best location is a water tank, and we found a, a really viable location here in Jamestown. Um, the tank that we're looking at is about 750,000 gallons, and that's a primo tank, in our opinion. Uh, but we could normally 150,000 and up we can work with. Um, like I said, it operates without interference. Um, the install itself is about a 10-day installation. The, uh, the lift is just one day. That's really the most exciting day out of that. It's sort of boring because it's a few guys on top and us all on the ground saying, what's going on up there? Um, but we coordinate all of that. Um, and before we do anything, we do a structural analysis. So we get the drawings, um, send those over to the engineers that we work with, and they'll give you a signed, stamped engineering package so that you have all the insurance you need before we move forward. Um, we get our FCC license, hang that at the site, of course we hang it at our office, um, and it's no cost to the community they work, that we work with. So the entire county would, would be covered by this. And I should add, this radar provides coverage for 60 miles. So it's not just um, Russell County that would benefit, it would certainly benefit the neighboring area <coughs> which is just filling the gap. But your public safety folks um, and your government folks in, uh, 
in Jamestown and, and the entire county would have access to this in real time every day. And just a few pictures of what it looks like. These are some of our installations. Um, we install two per month, so um, these are these are some of the earlier ones, but um, we could keep updating this <laughs> this slide. And then just the folks that we work with, um, Enterprise Electronics Corporation, uh, that's the company that I went on to work for and that now they actually manufacture our radar for us. Um, and then TEP, the Tower Engineering Professionals, they do a lot of water tank work um, and they are a pretty reputable engineering firm based in Raleigh um, but with offices all over the country. So they handle all the structurals and stuff like that. Um, and I think this particular tank, if I remember right, uses Caldwell for a maintenance provider, and they're based in Louisville, and we're, we're used to working with them too. So, uh, and then finally, the fun part: uh, data access. So, a lot of our partners say, "Well, how am I going to get this every day?" It's really easy. It's just a, a web URL. So, uh, it's, a web, it's a web URL, just a website, um, and each person gets their own login. So. Um, so you guys can access it from home or from work, you can access it on your phone. Um, it's pretty intuitive, but we don't just give it to you and tell you to run. We do a pretty big training with a meteorologist who's also an EMA, uh, just to show you how to use it and how you can use it for emergency management or public safety uh, purposes. Uh, but it would show your radar live every day, in addition to all of the National Weather Service radars around you in a composite. So um, you, you get everything in that one little dashboard. You can scroll in street level, zoom out, all your alerts would be in there too if there's something <coughs> in the morning in your area. And then this is kind of some of the ways that the um, public service or community partners use it. Um, there are a lot of other ways it doesn't have to be limited to this. And in my capacity, when I was working in public service, I used it mostly for school dismissals and event planning. Uh, I didn't use this, obviously, but I used weather data. Uh, for trying to figure out when and uh, how to let kids out when you have to let them out early or keep them later. Um, but you can use it for mobilizing resources. Um, that's a big thing when flooding, um, when it's flooding season, um, we need to get people over here because there's rain coming that way. Um, I can think of tons of other case studies and our team would be you know, happy to help walk through that if we need to. And that is the end of what I have. So I will pause. Um, I talk fast, uh, so I could get it all in there, but open to questions, comments, feedback. Uh, I'm all Can I say something? Of course, yeah. So <clears throat> when Emily and Tara first came to see me, actually, they sent an email and started out with an email. And I, I told her I'm pretty persistent as far as when I see something. And I, and I just started the conversation and said, how quick can you get here? And then so they came like the next week. But the thing, the, the 4,000 feet compared to 900 feet in the early morning, and this is the first one in Kentucky. Now they looked at all the wet, the water tanks in the county, and Emily said when they passed by it, and she said it's a 750,000 gallon tank, and then we checked back, and of course it was, but she knew right away, and she said that's the best because the platform and stuff for them is what they're looking for. But I mean, it was a. <clears throat> It was a no-brainer for me. It's just like, okay, now how do we get it? You know, and then they came and showed me the same stuff that they're showing you. So it's one of the three balloon tanks? No, yeah. it's the one that behind the MS, beside the MS, that's the big one. Yeah, right about that. Yeah. That's yeah. what I call it. Well, yeah. 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 The other one's about 500 or something. So I talked to Dale too. Yeah, and, and they, they were out there today with them for the side there. She said that went well, so I'm like, yeah, we're that much farther. Is, is this self-interpreting? I mean, I pull it on the website. It says, "Get the heck out of here!" or something. Or how do you know what? I mean, I'm used to people talk about the little curl and things like that. Yeah. You know, you see on weather channels. So, how do you know? How do as as an ignorant citizen in the basement? How do I know what I'm seeing? Yeah. It, well, there's a couple pieces to it. So, the website itself or the login would not be something that would be necessarily self-interpreted. So. It's not intuitive. You do have to have some training to go through it. Um, I think most people are used to seeing, you know, yellow, orange, green, red, right? You know, red, bad. <laughs> um, but this it gets into a little bit more detail, and you can click on different products like velocity and reflectivity. So that's why it would be for the government officials to access. So we would 
we would have somebody who yes. would be. Yeah, well, like the emergency manager. I know. They just right. they did the, the, the storm spotters class and had almost 100 people there. So, you know, there would be people that would have access to that. Yeah. So, uh, what did you say, 18 minutes? Yeah, 18 minutes, yeah. What's 18 minutes? Think about that's a long time a to get to get to safety, and uh, you know we don't we don't currently have that. So right. and the big thing for me and the business side of me, the first thing I asked her and I said, "How's it paid for?" Right? And and and, and they're paying for it. So we're we're just basically doing the tower with them, and so it's it's a win for us so how do you all make money you sell access to it all yeah. the services yeah so all that all the services yeah. i got yeah. you so you market those entities there that you yeah exactly yeah mm -hmm. media agriculture gotcha other apps on your phone right mm -hmm. i got you Whether so the general public will not be able to access the, yeah, the general public wouldn't access, but by having it up, and once the National Weather Service completes their work, or, and it's really at the NOAA federal level, when they get to that point, <coughs> since the widget will be there, then they would use it to warn the citizens. So the citizens would benefit from it. And like if a TV station purchased it, they would show it like on a screen using their MET interpretation. And chances are they would. I mean, in almost every installation, some TV station has said, hey, that's cool, and it's, it's much cheaper than buying your own radar. Um, and so they get pretty jazzed about it, too. Um, but yeah, the, the general public wouldn't go on a URL. Analysis. So our emergency medical people, our schools, mm -hmm. people who yep. have to deal with weather then would have this, and then they would respond and notify yeah. people who need to know, like me. Exactly. Uh, yeah. 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 Oh, whatever. Would, would those people be paying paying the fee to act? No, in your county they would not. They, so anybody that you stipulate as needing as being a responder or being a spotter or something to that effect, who needs access to it, they will have the access and the training. And we could do it through like a class um, if we needed to. Or like we don't have TV stations here, but we do have some local radio stations that yeah. do a pretty good job with the weather. Yeah. Yeah. So if you think about it, I mean, this is what got me, like, the uh, Louisville, or what's the other ones? Uh, when you turn on the, to listen to the National Weather Service, it's, mm -hmm. it's Louisville, uh, Jacksonville, or somewhere, or Knoxville, maybe. Jackson, Kentucky. Jackson, 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 Jackson. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, there's nothing around us. So like, the, there's not anything like from Bowling Green, you know, right. that we even pick up. So. What's the range on this right now? No, you're, you're exactly right. 60 miles. 60 miles, yeah. East direction, yeah. So actually, it's benefiting us to be able to know what's going on more in our area. Mm -hmm. Surrounding areas, huh? Yeah, that's what I mean, instead of seeing what's going on, you know, in your local yeah. Jackson. So when, when, I, when, I, right. when I send her the, I send her the tanks, I send her the, like, Russell Springs, like, you know, uh, Yasser Ridge and different places because it was, you know, for me, it was like trying to figure out what, you know, does she need a house part of the county or what? But then when they came in and saw the big tank, it was like, oh, it's so then that's when uh, well, I stopped and saw Tyler first and he told me he was talking to me. And he started to do it. I think it's pretty awesome if it's something that we can, I mean, access and be able to. Are you all asking for a long-term type of lease agreement or that is something It's typically like that? a form of lease um, that obviously guarantees the data back to your team and whoever you uh, stipulate and then our access to the site. And we if we have a template that we typically will send over. I will say they all sort of shake out differently depending on the community we're working with. Um, so we can send it over and, and have you guys look at it. Uh, a couple of maybe the key highlights is that if, for, if you are if you get the radar installed and then for some reason you say we don't like it up there or it's inhibiting operations or what, which that's never happened, we wouldn't anticipate that it would, we, we will come and take it down and there's some language in there that would protect you guys and ensure that it's not going to be some kind of... Uh, and I'm not suggesting the county, the city or the county be compensated, but it is our, we're just going to be donating the site to you all. Yeah, the space on top of the Just because of the public service. Mm -hmm. Okay. And for what we get back. I got you, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. 
like I said, the first thing for me is how's it get paid for? And then when we started talking through that, it's like this. Okay. And I mean, for me, it's good for Russell County, right? Whether it's here or Russell Springs, exactly. but this one makes more sense. And it's, exactly. and, you know, I like to see in the middle of the county. Yeah. My main concern would be getting the information to the, to the schools, Board of Education schools. Yep. Uh, if they would have access to that, yeah, yeah. Mom, they would be one of the If they were to send somebody to get training, you could give them an extra. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
age can look at it and get with maybe Randy and y'all go over stuff together maybe and we we'll all right. kind of try to get something going. I, I'm excited. I think it'd be great to yeah. get that information. I'm and for us to be the first one. The center should be the center should be a bit. That's right. Yeah. First one in the state of Kentucky. I mean, that's pretty awesome, yeah. I think. My wife, my, my wife said the storm won't get me my heart will. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say there would be two more in the states? Uh, one more in Kentucky. Um, can, can you disclose where that's at? Um, that yet? We're, we're looking up in like the Owen County area, so like around Stamping Ground. Um, just really just almost due north of here. Um, this is directly north, actually. Yeah, yeah. So that one, a uh, few more complex site challenges there. Not near as many water tanks, <laughs> so um, a little bit more complexity in that one. But yeah. that one is this one, kind of. So Tony, yeah. think of it in terms of this. There's ten other counties around us that it could win into, and she's here. So that's <laughs> the yeah. 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 She's here to go. And, and we can help you um, celebrate. You know, a lot of our partners do some kind of dedication <laughs> or ribbon cutting, and we think that's awesome. So um, we, we would love to help with that and be part of it. So. Don't say that. So. How quick are we talking? Um, I mean, honestly, the biggest part for us is once we have our lease um, signed, then we can put it on the schedule. Now, we install two every month. So right now, I think we're booked through September. Um, so through when, please? Through we're, when, we're booked through September, September on installation. We have um, more flexibility um, in the fall. Um, it, Kentucky's good in the fall because the weather doesn't get crazy. So we try to like reserve that time for uh, climates that are not problematic. So um, you know, October, November is a, is a good time in Kentucky for us so, to bring months. But I mean, it's not anything. Once so you get these things over, we get we get you to look at it. Then yeah, we don't have to have an extra meeting, special call, or anything. We can do it, take care of it as it comes. Yeah. It normally takes us ninety days to coordinate utilities and stuff, so that's that's a good way to do anything. But uh, maybe did you say something about gas? We yeah, uh, no, we need to talk to Terry Wilson to see if there's gas there. Yeah. We, we, we don't propane. Uh, we don't propane for the. Yeah, you know, about yeah. Two of the yards from there, but we wouldn't uh, see what uh, access we have to the natural gas. So I think that, that's just a minor question we got. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a Is that the natural gas that run the backup generator? Or? Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, that propane works too. Um, natural gas is preferred just because it's very reliable, but it's a little household generator. Um, this, this radar is very low power, so it doesn't need a lot. Um, we just want it there for a minute. Normally, how long is your contract for? Um, typical is like 20 years. Um, so we have a couple, I think we have one that does like every five years. They do a five year auto five year. That's what I'm going to do. But that's the starting point. But again, whatever you get, you just want to put your own. I don't remember if it runs out there, but I'm pretty sure it runs around industrial. I think the EMS has natural gas over there. I'll, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure the main, there's a main that runs around. Yeah, we might have. I think we had to dig around it for that, for the door. There, there is, but I don't know uh, if you wait the distance from that gas, yeah. it, I guess it's a cost issue between that program. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. It's whatever's cheapest. Yeah, I know some of them, some natural gas, I can't support you that just go. <laughs> right, <laughs> so, right. It's, it's, it's actually not that far, but you know. Okay. Oh, yeah, exactly. I think the real fiber already out there, yeah. So across the street. We run on our preferred fiber pumps, and they have some good um, there, so. Well, like Randy said, it's, it's probably a no-brainer for us. Um, yeah, I hate to see it. Yeah, well, I mean, like I said, the first thing is the paper. Is paper? Are we going to pay for this? Well, let's see. Yeah, I thought it was going to be expensive. I might get to the basement and get an interpreter. I'm in the basement too, don't worry. Well, I think you just need to have you send us the information at this point. We'll look at everything, and I. I mean, I just think it's a great thing. I'm excited for James to get his contact.
reading from the back in. 18 minutes can make us save a lot of lives, I think. Yeah. Like it's, when it gets to a letter, I don't know, there's been times when a couple of minutes has made a big difference. So, pretty exciting, I think, to get something like that in Russell County. And you can kind of see, if you think about it, the only weather that everybody gets is close to a big city and we're sitting here near zero big cities. So. Yeah, and most of these gaps are in areas <coughs> like that where um, you might have retiree community or a senior population um, and it's hard to, to get out of harm's way. So. Have you all ever noticed how the lake affects our weather though? Yes. It makes a real difference. It does. Or <coughs> storms jump over or come through and it's it so. Yeah. yeah. They're always a big It does it around the <coughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, they're on the big And then with this you can sit and follow it and watch it as it goes. <laughs> I think it's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for having me. We appreciate you getting too. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much for coming and bringing that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank um, you for considering. Yes. Absolutely. I'll, no, it's serious, but I'll drop um, my contact information here too, just in case. Thank you. Okay. Of course. Um, Uh, HK 
had to do a letter that he's read all this and looked at everything and is everything looks good for us. And then after we passed the resolution, we had the letter that goes in with the resolution for our final paperwork for the water tower. Now, I don't know when to expect that we get the funding, but this is the final leg for the funding. And I believe it's 887, 877,000 that we're looking at getting for the tank. So, big step, big step. Uh, going to be a big tank. It's going to have a lot more water than what the other two tanks at Manor Grove and Cookie Creek held together. About uh, what was the size? 30 and. This one's a 300,000 gallon. And the ones we had was What's 30 and 50 or 30 and 70. I think Manor's 50. Yeah, it's 50. And, and the Clifty's either 30 or 20. It's a little thing. The glass tank is, isn't it? Yes. So lots more water. <coughs> we have big people's pressure. I would think we'll see a whole different okay. in, in their areas. People that's not had. How do, how, do they, how do we get by while well, that was being torn down? That's what I was going to ask. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I'm assuming bypass water. Okay. Um, there's there's other ways around into when you can shut, shut the lines off and, and bring them back in, but the, the engineers will. That's what, yeah. that's what they're here for. One tank will stay online until we get ready to switch over. Mm -hmm. okay. So Sounds good. I'm pretty exciting. Something we worked on for a long time and needed uh, when they applied for to get the money. It's been what over maybe a year ago. Yeah. Been a year ago, I yeah. guess. And that was our main project that we needed money for. So thankfully, that's what was presented because that's how we got the large sum money was by presenting that project that was very expensive. So not only way we could get that water tank replaced. Sure. So, I have a frame on how long it would take to tear that one down and put that one up. He told me when we went and looked at that site that the whole thing's only probably what of course that wasn't tearing one down but like four to six weeks uh, to put the new one up. Yeah, so I think we met Debbie wasn't it four to six weeks to put one up. He didn't think about tearing it down, did he? No, this was just to put a new one up, put the fence around it, everything completely. I'm assuming down. they'll leave Maynard and buy and, and come in and bypass water backwards and then tear, 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 tear the glass tank down, build the new three hundred thousand gallon tank, put it on mine, and, and then Maynard comes in. Yeah. Maynard is this new tank going to be like exactly where the one down there is now? Yes. It's not going to be beside it or anything like that. So anyway, uh, HKU had that resolution. Our final resolution. So the resolution of the city of Jackson accepting the grant, approving the grant assistance agreement, authorizing the amendment of the city of Jamestown land and budget, and authorizing the representative to sign all related documents. Motion, Just take a motion. Pass motion that. Made. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> Okay, so we'll get that, uh, and then HK, I think, is... I'm just going to get a title of the letter now. Already got the letter. He's <laughs> already approved everything. So all this will go back into Lake Cumberland Ag, and that should be all we need. We do. Hopefully they don't have to be able to read your signature. <laughs> okay, so um, we've already passed on the weather indicator. A uh, few little things that I have real quick. Uh, first of all, we want to do a shout out to Trish here. He uh, went over to the city park and donated his time at the ballpark to install the new light fixtures. He went over and did that and just on his own time and didn't charge us anything for that. So we want to give a big shout out to him. We appreciate that and him doing that for us. So you all see him out anywhere, just make sure to thank him for donating his time for that. We're getting big, big crowds. Uh, there wasn't nothing that wasn't in use over there last night. 
there's a, there's a boys high school match yeah. tennis match over there tonight. Yeah. Parking is getting to be an issue too. It was packed. <laughs> packed. Um, we have found some money to uh, do some surveying for us as far as uh, the land we discussed. Uh, Mike McKinney out of Adair County is going to come over probably next week and start working on that. So, possibility of uh, hopefully of getting that. Find out about that land yes. anyway. See mm -hmm. where it lays, how much land we're looking at. Actually, have some kind of something that we know yeah. instead of guessing. But he said, uh, he said, just give him a, a couple more things and get you over next week to the start. Sounds good. Did, would it help the parking over there any right now if we had a culvert in like that down there in that lot where the croquet court used to be? Um, you know, you have to come into the the upper lot or there by the playground to go down into that lot park and then people in later games come in and walk in down there. There's no cover down there. But yeah. Ballpark Road where they drive across the now. Yeah, park. we ran into that last year. We combed it off the first well, a couple weeks last year, those little league games to where we left a like basically a drive into that and then they parked all the way around it. But again, I don't know. It's like everything else. Why don't we just put a cover in there? And let them come in the bottom side. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that shouldn't be. Okay. Shouldn't be a big deal. And then we got, we, we actually owned a lot across. Um, we just haven't done anything with it yet. Uh, yeah, we, we, we bought it in that uh, garage, you know, and, and we can own that lot. We, we can probably grab that, you know, we didn't make a parking I mean, they can definitely be several, there's several spots right there. You know, they just park, you know, just in a U shape or something around this. Oh, I think you can facilitate the hand now that I'm going to pull the rod down and make it put a cover in this. Uh, I bought three sticks back last year, so we have these tiles and they put sticks on this butt. So, good ideas. A couple other things, just uh, real quick. Um, Wayne Lynch came in to the bank a couple times. They, I guess, with the old boys' toys and what that puts on the car show at um, Lake Fest. And I think used to they charged a little bit of a fee. And they got away from it. My show sure didn't charge anything. He asked that they be able to charge $10 each for entry fees just to cover some of the stuff that they had to do, the expense and stuff for them. So, I, which, which I think is fine, but then they also want us to buy the trophies and supply $500 for money. So, who should get that $10? There you go. Yeah, exactly. So, just throwing it out there. Well, they need the ten dollar entry fee for we're paying for the trophies and just paying the five hundred dollars for prize money. Well, I, don't I, don't have any the place. I wouldn't have any problem with them charging an entry fee. I mean, uh, concessionaires, you know, they yeah. they charge for their food or whatever they're selling, and I, I assume they pay us a commission off of their sales or not. They they play a flat rate. We don't. They pay. Old out. boys don't pay us anything, do they? No. The only thing left to pay is their DJ. Just he just come and ask, and I said, I, 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 I see. I didn't even know. I think we pay that too, though. I think we did. We do it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we do. So I don't know. I mean, they can charge it. But I think they ought to do that. Well, I don't have any problem with them charging it and uh, using it for themselves if they buy their own trophies, but I don't think they'll charge it and then uh, donate the paper. I buy the trophies and give them back to her people. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Who gets it if they charge it for the club? Club? The club, yes. <clears throat> the club gets it. Yeah. 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 So, 
what's your off stops? Leave it as it is with no fee, or if they want to buy more properties, they can charge the fee. What, what's your off stops? I mean, I'm, 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 you know, I've got to call him and let him know. So. Yeah, last year I paid five hundred dollars cash for the prizes, a hundred dollars to Ron for the DJ, and four hundred eighty dollars to Kevin Johnson for trophies. There you go. Thousand bucks. So we paid that last year, mm -hmm. and they charge no fee. No, they didn't charge no the fee. fee. But they're asking to charge ten dollars per entry fee this year, and they've already asked for the same thing this year for. What kind of turnout did they? I, I know there's a lot of cars, but I don't know a number. They don't turn it into me. And don't we have them scheduled to be here? They asked to be back down there at K's again. Mm -hmm. but you, yeah. Because of the people coming in and the cars being right there, I guess. I think um, we're going to put them, then we talk about putting them in the parking lot this year, not even having them on the street. Not even any on the street. I don't, I really don't have them on the street. Well, they, it, they locked it, I think, because people have been walking up down the street. Yeah, but it, but it is a that's disaster. Yeah. Trying to get move it. on. So I think this year they're just going to be in the judicial center parking lot down there. And I mean, you know, people still they don't see them. They're going to walk down there. I'd say you give him his choice. If he wants to charge a, charge a fee, then he, he pays for his trophies and all of his expenses out of that. And we don't have to give him anything but a place to put it on. But if he wants us to supply everything we supplied last year, then we should be no fees. Or we, or we should get them if they want. If they want. Or if they charge. How you know how many entries you got? Yeah. Yeah. How long have yeah. we been paying that? <clears throat> a long time. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not like we're adding here. No. You know, this is something we've always done. Anyway. In the past, at one time, he said they did charge an entry fee, and then they quit charging. But we never got it. No, we never got it. I think the car flowed, yeah. Okay, so. But I don't see them breaking even on that, but that's just me. I mean, even if they do charge it, I mean, it's probably worth a little bit of money, to, I guess, for them to put it on, but <laughs> no, I don't see that. You know, they're they're about $1,100 now. I was doing that. I mean, that's several cars, $10 a piece. I'd say, I'd say there wasn't over, what, 30, 40 last year? That's what I Maybe. Maybe. I, I, I'm not, I can't remember, but. So it's, they're not going to... But they filled, they filled this lot down here, and then, what, they were have been 20 on the street. Yeah. I don't mean that it's over 40 or so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I they're not going to, like I say, they're not going to break even if they do. Yeah, I'd say 50 will catch on, but I mean, I'm... Well, I think if they charge us the $10, why can't they use that for their prize, their prizes, and they'll still pay for the trophies? They'd be better off to leave it like it is, I think. I mean, as far as... Because if they if that's up if they have forty cars that's four hundred dollars and if we're paying more than that for trophies or so well last year the trophies were four eighty and then five hundred so you're looking at you know it's over a thousand dollars. Well, if they charge then whatever they accumulate, then maybe we can help make up the difference and then save us whatever they get. If they get five hundred dollars and, and Kick it in on what it costs, then we're out what six hundred. But they're wanting that in advance of what mm -hmm. they're, mm -hmm. they're wanting ten dollars well, for okay. their club for each car. Okay. And you know it is an event that uh, I don't know how many people it attracts, but it does attract some people. Or yeah, a lot of people. I mean, they're faithful to it. Yeah, sure. Are. I mean, it's, if we've been paying that all the time <clears> anyway, it's not. Costing us anything to let them charge a small fee for the club. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to help benefit the club, you know. But they're they're pretty consistent about having, you know, that amount, uh, that amount of cars, 30, 40, whatever it is. And uh, it does get uh, a lot of attention, actually. A lot of people look at them. I mean, you know. I like, I like, them. I like, yeah, I like them. Yeah. Yeah. Makes me think back. Yeah. <laughs> I'm more partial to the hot rods now than the original. Yeah. <laughs>
Okay, so what do y'all want me to tell? I think Tony had the right idea. If they want to charge $10, it's up to them. Yeah. Them let us in free. <laughs> <laughs> It's not going to cost us any more than it always has anyway. No. We broke it. That's right. Okay, so well, everything's as it is, but if they want to charge $10, it's up to them. It's going to be in the Judicial Center parking lot. Okay, good? Speak now or forever on your peace. Good for me. Okay, one more thing. Uh, two more things, actually, uh, just uh, for information. HK has the deeds ready for the property that we're buying off of Jen and Virginia Grider. So all we have now, the daughter's 18, all we have now, those are prepared, is to get them signed and get them recorded. And how do you all want to do that? We owe them, what, $7,000? I guess you would split it up. Virginia gets half, and then Billy and Mackenzie gets the other half. It's about the fourth each. Uh, I have two documents. Mackenzie needs to sign an additional document. Uh, stating uh, when her dad died because she is here in his part that has to go over this deed. The city needs to sign this tonight. Wow. Yeah. They got to leave it with you. Yeah. And yeah. It, yeah. It, yeah. Is there a note yeah. here in the office? Yeah. 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 Well, they can come here all the time. All right, that's fine. <laughs> well, then the you and Tyler can sign here. Yeah. 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 And we voted to do this without yeah. 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 What about the fees? If we decide to handle that, there's going to be fees. Well, I, mean, I, I just I kind of thought they probably would ask us to do that. There's about a fifty dollar the quarter fee or more, D -tax. and a D tax. So we're talking probably one hundred fifty dollars that would be going to the county clerk because this affidavit for an extra probably one hundred fifty dollars. So did we agree to do that or? Did we? I think we agreed to give them seven thousand. So yeah, yeah. That, that's for us to do that. Yeah, I haven't heard about anything. Of course, normal is that the seller pays for the tax and have it be paid. Exactly so right. you know that's normal unless you have. And those are really rent. expensive deeds too. I'll tell you. Yeah. And then the truck will come up to we're not pay. <laughs> well, anyway, there we are. <laughs> Casey needs to sign the affidavit and Tyler and the mayor need to sign the big thing. We've got our part done. You know what? I'll promise somebody else to authorize that. I can do it. She can do it. Oh, you know her? Okay. That's good. All right. Well, we can leave them with you then. She yeah. can authorize. So we've done signing. Now, can we talk about those things? Yes. This is something the mayor had. We met up on the hill. The old, the old people were going to be old water tank. Yeah. Last fall, mm -hmm. there's a little area of land that was owned by the town of Jamestown since 1933, where the old water tank was. All of us remember that. It's right in the backyard of uh, a house that Billy and Barbara lived in, Coley Coffin, but now it's inherited by <clears throat> the Coley's heirs, his wife's widow, and, and uh, Robert's and whatever. They proposed to us, to the city, to deed them that. Yeah. There's three big old, four big old concrete things there. It's kind of, kind of interesting. But it's right in the backyard. The city cannot give property away, but there was an easement made from Brooks Bates, the mayor of the city, across the corner of a cemetery there, which Coley signed over to the city, which lets the city come out where people dash through there, come kind of cut across, and there's several lots that was deeded to the city for the purposes of ingress and egress across that uh, city road there. Here it is. Uh, parts of lots 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It's hard for me to know if it's really just the road that we've all used all these years. I think it's more than that. I think it goes up into that underground. Come across. So, the way that uh, uh, Trey Wilkerson's been working on this, I could not find the deed is under the name of the town of Jamestown, which was in 1933. 
So Trey found it all, put it all together. He's prepared this deed for the city to deed the old water tank plat up there behind the house to them so they can have it. And also, believe it or not, there's an act, there's an easement all the way down to uh, my road there, Shelby Street, mm -hmm. that comes up the hill to, to service that, which as far as I know is never used. So this is the deed. The consideration for the deeding of that is this easement that was made, or this deed was made by Coley back in 2010, actually, is what it was. Now, how they worked out, I do not know. So that would be up to you all. We met up there, we kind of, they wanted to give us land or sell us some land or something, which we determined that maybe that was not in our best interest to own it outright. Am I correct? Quite a cleanup. A lot of mess. It's a big mess, and we've got lots of land up there. Yeah. So my question, and I, my question, at some point, do we want to execute this deed that's been prepared? Uh, I think they kind of thought we were going to do it, but I mean that's up to you all, your bosses. Well, that day up there, I think that's what their understanding was. And we don't need it. It's just uh, weird. Nothing we can do with it. Nothing we can do with it. It's just a little square in his backyard. So. Yeah. About a third of the size of this, well, maybe maybe the size of this. Not hardly this big. Maybe half the size of this room. Yeah. So we can just, we can just swap. We're just swapping. Yeah. We're swapping these lots behind the house there for a deed to that property up there. And they're doing really, I mean, it's good. They're really cleaning that place up. It's so uh, going to be nice. Do we need a motion on it? Do we do a motion to let the mayor sign the deed? Tyler, make a motion. I do. I'm just trying to. Think. There's two service lines running through there, right? Do you remember? No. I, can't, I can't remember. I feel like there's two service lines running through there, but they go to that. They go to those places anyway, so I don't guess that really matters. I mean, they go to the water tank? Oh. No, no, they're actual water meters that run up through. Oh, okay. But where, where you're talking about that easement, as long as it doesn't affect that. Well, it can't. I but what? I mean, even if it did, it's their, it'll be their land now anyway. So. Yeah, but we still, we, so we were still exactly. have a right, so we were still have a right to use whatever we've been doing. And that's the end of services that were run up. Um, you have a but it does clean that hill up there, but here's a plant. Uh, <laughs> it's really odd. I have no idea. It's 0.0, it's 57 hundredths of an acre, not even, it's not a half acre, it's a fraction of a half acre. 2,500 square feet is all that it is. The square we gave them. Yes, yes. Yeah. Just a, just a. Let him have. It's not anything that's going to cause anything to be done. It's not. Let him have. Lots. No, this is this is coming up another way anyway. So Their okay. services are okay. Yeah. Okay. So if that's agreeable, I would ask uh, the mayor to sign this and Tyler to sign it. I will turn it back then over to Trey and he can have the coffee sign it. And then we'll be good. So you do need a motion. Yes. yes. I need a motion to be able to sign this. I'll make the motion. You need a second. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? And they're excited about the neighborhood. I'll vote for uh -huh. <laughs> They're excited about the neighborhood. They're approving it. It's going to be cleaned up. It's really pretty cool. Yeah. He was doing a lot of work with that one. Yeah. Yeah. Bob yeah. Bruce is going to ride. And Ann, she's kind of a. Pretty, pretty smart. Sure. Yes. And they love James Hill. Uh, concrete pillars there. With that tank is set on here and be Jeff, you got anything? Anything going on that you want to talk about? Um, tough week for um, emergency services for the dispatcher. We also lost uh, a gentleman that worked at the Justice Center that passed away, Mr. Record. Um, court security, so pretty tough week. Tough day today for the services. Um, just a quick update on our laptops. We have those in. Uh, that's the reason I missed last council meeting. I was all day with the fellows putting in the modems. I think we got our first bill today. But um, 
We're all in with the exception of my cruiser. I don't have any laptop in mind yet. I'm but everybody else has theirs. We're using those. Uh, a lot more cleaner on the paperwork. Um, so uh, we took a few step. The next step is hopefully getting that open box. And that's uh, uh, got back from just a little bit with other stuff going on. But get started on that as soon as I can. But, so we're so catching up. Everybody that's got them knows how to use what they've got already. And Yes, uh, okay. the only one that will have to have a severe class will be me. <laughs> I've already got just a little bit of that class from one of the younger people, but uh, uh, yes, it will be a big hurdle for me to get used to that uh, because we've basically done it the same way since I started here in 97. So we have those. Uh, I, I can break those maybe and show you the difference the next meeting so you can see what I handwritten compared to what that is, it's amazing. And we were having to take those copies and distribute them to the clerk's office. We don't do any of that now. We just hit that button and it transmits everywhere we need to go. So it's just uh, put us in line with everyone else. So we're, and actually we have better computers. Russell Springs at the top of the line. Uh, the computers that we got are gonna be the computers they get the next time when they do an upgrade. The printers that we got, are the printers they're going to get for their next when they do a next upgrade? So top of the line equipment. So it's <coughs> also So yeah. thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to see Jill, send you a frame. Do you need? No. No. Thank you. Virginia's been talked to by different ones, and I've been talked to by different ones. It's been the same one that well, was talking I've about. been talked to with people even before I was elected. You can talk to me about I even talked to Mitchell about it. <laughs> Back years ago, whenever, before I thought about running again. It's, um, with us being a tourist community, and most of your other tourist communities, whether it's here, in the state of Kentucky or whether it's in Tennessee or Virginia, West Virginia, wherever. They let, I mean, I know we have the ordinance on golf carts. To me, the golf carts are a whole lot more dangerous than a side-by-side -side is. Side-by-side -side can get out of the way, they have headlights, they've got tail lights. The package to put turn signals on, I think it's about a hundred bucks if it just plugs in. I mean, it's, but by the state standards, I'll give all of you the state law on it, the KRS. We as a local government can, I guess we have to, the way I read it in my right HK, it's in 7C, we would have to ask the transportation department to let us, but we could approve for them to be on any city streets or in the city limits. Because the city limits is our what we got. Yes, it does. Know. With the new restaurant going in, I think you'd see a lot of traffic from down toward the marina because there's a lot of people down in there that have that they would love to be able to just come out, jump on it, and they could ride up here to town in the open air during the summer, come to eat visit our shops, so forth and so on. I just think it's something we need to look at. Uh, I know Tyler and me have talked about the golf carts, and I think your all's inspection stuff's even expired. Yeah. You told me or something. Yeah. I don't know what it would take. I'm sure HK would know or could look into it. I just feel like it's something we either need to take the golf cart thing completely out, I just bought one. Oh, I'm sorry, Mayor. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we need to bump it up and beef it up a little bit. Um, it's like with me. I'm in the city limits, but by the way the old ordinance reads, I can't even take my golf cart out because it changes to above 30 mile per hour before you get to the dollar store. The KRS that we passed that ordinance under, uh, it's stipulated at 35 miles an hour. Or less That's correct. That was as high as we, we couldn't put it on a 45 or 55 mile road. 
This is the latest one. This is the newest. <coughs> the way I understand that is all you have to do is they would do it. That they have to I think when you read through it, they have, the person has to have at least 16 have a valid driver's license. Best to have seat belts, headlights, tail lights. It doesn't necessarily have to have turn signals or a horn. It, it gives you a list of stuff in there. It have to be insured. Uh, it have to be insured. It doesn't say it in here. Subsection C says the transportation cabin be designated the city of the county government may designate those public highways, segments of public highways, uh, join roadways, or public highways under this jurisdiction where all train vehicles that are prohibited to maybe operate. So, it looks like it's a little more wide open than it was. Yeah, I think it's a little different than what it was back when y'all passed the golf course. Yeah, it was limited to a maximum of 35 miles yeah. an hour back then. And of course, you didn't have much that would run over 35 back then either. What's that on? It says that the person has to be 16, but right above that, 6A says, a parent or legal guardian of a minor who is under the age of six <coughs> shall That's not allow that person. Yeah. Actually, anybody that's under 16 is not even supposed to operate one on a farm. But this is just saying under age six, so a seven-year-old could no. arrive. No. It says you have to have a driver's license in order to put it on the road. Well, Whether it it's for farming or anything, that's if it's on the farm. That's where that's where you let your child sit in your lap, in my opinion. Probably. Or let if you're uh, yeah. adults in there and let a child yeah. drive it. I hate to see a seven year old drive one. I would too. <laughs> I don't want to see a seven year old. Drive well, six C says a person under the age of sixteen, when operating or riding as a passenger on an off terrain vehicle, shall wear a proof head gear. So I mean, it's saying right there, a person under age sixteen. Also, yeah, That's what I'm saying. It's, it's kind of, it's telling you don't want to that. <laughs> yeah, we're not, we need to be talking that matter up there. Says, if you're under the age of six, you what about the insurance thing? Then a seven-year-old could, right? Yeah, I don't know. Well, it's great to be. Just to tell you what I'm Yes, doing. yes. Well, if we had a place like we're going to go and ride, like these trails, and you wanted those people like the place, there's a place in Tennessee that does that? I would say yes. We don't have that. And I just feel that this is a recipe for disaster. I mean, but I mean, that's my opinion. I, mean, I think the whole state should legalize it if that's the case. I know other states, if you go to Tennessee, they're riding around and getting on like crazy. Yeah. But they have tags on them. There have to be tags like a vehicle or a motorcycle. And insurance. And insurance. And insurance goes to get up and plug into somebody's. I'm, I mean, I think you could, HK, you could probably even write that in your order. Oh, yeah. Well, they have to have insurance. I would assume if they're getting a tag, they have to. It has to all that. They got to be equipped with like a car as far as insurance and license and all that. Yes. Of yeah, course, in here it says it tells you they can't be licensed for the road, but you can approve them for the road. That's true. Yeah, but if you approve them for the road, you know, then you put a vehicle on the road that. Could potentially play on somebody's Mercedes Benz and it'd be uninsured, and there's this guy. Let's not talk about that part. <laughs> I was just asked by different ones over time if I'd ever bring it up. So I pulled up the KRS on it. Uh, give everybody a copy of the KRS. I brought it up. We looked into this once. We did. Yeah. Um, did we look into it though? I don't think it, no. I, this is this took effect about a year and a half ago. Yeah. I know it was supposed to be right. It said you can get an age for the Walmart yeah. Department of Transportation to see what well, I need to do. I agree. I mean, June 21, what is it? No, I just wonder if there's somebody there that can go speak I don't or if we can get a hold of them. I don't think we've been serious since uh, June of 21. Yeah, I'm like Mitchell. I'd like for HK to look into it. Sure. The, the previous Maybe KRS, it actually specifically excluded anything but golf carts. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. 
exactly right. Yeah, they exclude I mean, I would prefer that we excluded four, just your regular four in a one or two fashion. Because I don't think they've got any business on the road. <coughs> you know, but a side by side, as long as they're obeying the speed limit and such as that, I'm. Well, that's they're, not, they're, they're kind of like the G front. Really yeah. Like, I mean, they're small. Well, it's the same difference as the slingshots that Polaris puts out. And they do license them for the road. And they're just a three wheel side by side, that's what they are. They're no different than. I don't like that word slingshot. Well, that's the reason I don't want to have four wheels, eh? It's not like somebody going over in the KM. Yeah. Like the next code. I think the state's missing out. I mean, personally, you go, like, you go to other states, you see them. Gatlinburg, you see them everywhere. But they're licensed. I'm sure that requires, well, I always have to be licensed. That requires too. insurance. I don't think you can license them. You can't license them in the state. You can't license them. Can't license them you can't license them. I, no. Side to side? No. I think even Ohio has that. We've run into that issue where okay. uh, we yeah. catch them on the road, and those folks will have license on them, and they have a lot of plates on them. And they you, seem to, on, be, it's what it's you seem to be bordered by every state that have legalized those. Kentucky hasn't legalized them yet. It's like in Florida or some other rooms. They license mm -hmm. the golf carts. Well, everybody she knows down there, she's about to worry me to death with my golf cart. I'm like, you've lost your mother for mine, mother. You ain't getting my golf cart. <laughs> but they license them. You pull into Walmart, and there's almost as many golf carts at Walmart as what there is cars. Right. They drive them all over. This is kind of confusing here, like the team said, this is the I don't know if it's an operator at all. He said, you know, 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 I'm like you, it is. It's like you got broke. It needs to be some type of. And that's where my partner tries to.